Good evening, race fans. Welcome to the Finger Lakes region in New York here. We are at the Watkins Glen International Speedway, and uh, we are here for round two of the CSRL GT Series. And uh, the first round at Interlagos last week was definitely a good one, and these guys will, will have uh, some more familiarity, I think, here tonight, and it should put on a, a great race. A lot of guys know Watkins Glen from from one way or another obviously uh my uh, my co-host in here is certainly uh, I'm, I'm sure has turned uh, quite a few laps here at Watkins Glen as uh even though he's a he's an oval guy this is a road course that typically gets uh, gets touched here a little bit Carl Hamrick in the booth joined by Joe Sullivan Joe we are going road course racing here at Watkins Glen usually utilizing the boot here so maybe not uh, too much familiarity with the boot section of it but I'm sure you have plenty of laps here yeah, we uh, like I said, this is normally for NASCAR stuff, and that's uh, kind of my cup of tea. But um, we actually get to see some uh, some speeds out of these cars here tonight um, with with the GT3s here. And uh, I got to tell you, Carl, I, I'm I'm sorry to everybody I missed last week. I was on my deathbed pretty much with the, some illness that I had, but uh, I am back and ready, and I'm I'm excited that this is to get to be the first race. That's first race I get to see because this is going to be a fun one. I, I, I'm I'm calling it now. This is going to be an exciting race for everybody to watch here tonight. Yeah, obviously uh, last week was was definitely a good one, and uh, got to see uh, who's going to be uh, showing up and and showing out here for uh, for the new season, and uh, did get to see uh, Tim Ponzi take the uh, the win pretty convincingly um, over uh, Craig Jancic, Frank Bassano, and Colin Winslow, your top four last week, and then Jason Potts was the winner um, again, also pretty convincingly as as the fields got uh, spread out there a little bit. But got to see some uh, some good racing action, and uh, last season's winner, John Seymour, uh, coming all the way to the line and uh, making it very close there with uh, Jason Potts to uh, to bring that thing home. As it was, uh, I know it was less than a tenth of a second. It was very very close. But you know, even though it wasn't for position, these guys are still racing for pride, and every single position matters. These guys are out there for qualifying right now. We're going to bring in a couple of the uh, the drivers here tonight. The Pro driver we're going to bring in is going to be A.J. Roderick, and uh, the AM driver we're going to bring in is third place last week, Jay Little. Going to give them a little bit of time here to uh, to get some qualifying runs in. But, uh, again, you know, familiarity here at, at Watkins Glen. Does it, you know, tend to, to make you, you know, want to drive a little bit harder? Does it, you know, is it one where you, you kind of know the track layout and uh, you can kind of uh, start picking it apart a little bit quicker and, and try and find those quick lines. What What's the, the mindset when you come to a track that you, you know, you have some understanding on? Yeah, for me, like, it, it, cause they have a practice session and I jumped in it last night just to get some laps in and, you know, run with these guys. And it took me a several laps to, you know, do the boot part of it. So um, I'm wondering how, uh, how those guys did with that, but, it's going to be interesting to see how the race starts here, whether if it's going to be, you know, these guys wanting to get all they can at the beginning or if, if they're going to want to settle in and then try to try to get a little bit comfortable and then, you know, start pushing to, to get those laps. But these guys have always been putting on, you know, from last season where we broadcasted, they put on some really good shows here and um, some good hard racing. So uh, I'm, I'm going to be watching these first couple laps and these first couple turns and see how these guys get through here and then kind of, you know, see, see what they can do after that. Well, listen, uh, I, I know you're slowly starting to get your feet wet here with the uh, with the road course racing, and I'm sure inquiring minds want to know. You said you got out there and practiced with these guys a little bit last night. How did it go? How far off were you? What did you take away from it? Like, what, what, are the, uh, what are the guys going to be looking forward to here tonight? Well, uh, let's see. I got out there and... Um, that's something I was going to try to bring up to you. I don't know how much the draft plays here. I know there's, you know, there's some pretty good straightaways here and some speed, some really high speed. Um, and I was out on track by myself the entire time. So I don't know if, if drafts is going to make a difference or not, but I was, I feel like I was, I was a little under, like, I think it was like 1.8 seconds off the, uh, I think Ponzi was the, the leader in the clubhouse there in practice. And uh, I was 1.8 seconds off him. But like I said, I, I'm, kind of familiar with this track it did take me a couple laps to uh keep going left instead of taking that right there at uh, <laughs> around the bend but um once i kind of figured that out i got faster as we as as the more laps i got in there so i'm 
I was kind of itching that I kind of want to get out there with them, but like it's going to be fun to watch up here and, and broadcast. But um, I'm definitely excited for the the core GT series. I'm I'm ready to I'm ready to get out there on the on these on these road courses and uh, you know, have some fun. Yeah, yeah, uh, absolutely. Well, let's take a look at the uh, the point standings. Uh, it's obviously just been after uh, one race here, but take a look at it right now and try and get that uh, a little bit bigger for everybody here. There we go. Now we can see it. Now we can read it. And uh, it is uh, obviously headed by your winners last week being Jason Potts in the AM class and uh, Timothy Ponzi in uh, the the pro class. But just one race. I mean, we seen last season Tim Ponzi lead after the first race. And uh, we talked to him last week to, to see what the mindset's going to be now. Again, having a, a good start to the season. Can he keep that thing rolling? Obviously, he's he's pretty quick here tonight. I'm um, going to need to put in a, a good qualifying effort because, yeah, as you mentioned, the, the draft maybe works a little bit down the backstretch, um, but not as much as you want it to. Uh, it's 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 about as, as much as, as NASCAR, you know, utilizes here. There's by, by the time you get up to speed, you're not really gaining that much. Uh, it's, you know, it's going to keep you around the same time if you get off the corner, but it's, uh, the draft isn't going to mean as much. It's going to be as usual, you know, corner entry, corner exit is, is where you're going to be picking up and losing time. And then also from the, uh, from the pit stop. And we've seen some, uh, you know, some shaking up of the, uh, the pit stops last week. So we'll see how it works out this week. But I know there's going to be a lot of guys looking to right some wrongs from, uh, Inner Lagos last week, and uh, this is definitely a track you can do it at. But again, it's it, it all depends. I mean, there's there's really two different mindsets. I mean, I, we've seen guys come into a track that they know and uh, perform really well, and then we've seen guys come in to a track that they know and overdrive it because they know it so well. They think they can push it just a little bit harder, and uh, that's where mistakes come in. But let's go ahead and uh, and talk to a couple of the drivers that are going to be out there in the uh the race here tonight and uh, we will bring in our drivers here and that's going to be driver of the 56 aj roderick and uh, driver of uh, the uh, 196 jay little so joe uh why don't, you, why don't you go ahead and take our took our first interview here and uh pick these uh these guys brains about tonight's race hey there jay um you got a third place finish last week. Um, we're coming here to Watkins Glen. Um, how familiar are you with this track and, and how are you feeling tonight? Uh, pretty familiar with the track overall. Tonight's the first uh, time I've ever driven the Ferrari here, so that should be interesting. What did you, um, what were you driving last week there? Uh, believe it or not, most of the time I drive the uh, Ford Mustang here. Okay. So you uh, feeling pretty good tonight for this? Uh, try to keep up there in the in the point standings. Ah, uh, well, <laughs> not sure about that, but uh, I guess the main goal will be to uh, try to drive as clean as possible, stay out of everybody's way, and uh, try to be as turning some clean laps. Is that going to be the, like the, your first couple laps? Just kind of try to settle into a spot and 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 log some laps, and then just whatever happens, happens, huh? Absolutely, and uh, not that I don't want anyone to crash, but uh, that could help me out too. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll see how the racing goes. It's it's uh, see how these first couple laps go for everybody, and uh, hopefully you can kind of avoid that and maybe get some get some more time here tonight. And whatever happens, and if you can come up with a good finish and keep yourself up there in the points innings and keep a keep a good season going here, starting to, uh, for season eight here. So. Uh, uh, anybody you want to give a shout out to before we uh, let you go back? I uh, just want to say I really appreciate the league. I uh, appreciate you guys for putting on the broadcast. Um, good times. Loving it. <laughs> All righty. Well, we appreciate it. All right, Jay. We'll let you get back in the car and uh, get ready for this race. And uh, we'll now talk to uh, AJ Roderick. And uh, AJ, you had a, uh, a decent finish last week, finishing the top five, or actually uh, just outside the top five and in, uh, in sixth place there. But um, Interlagos is definitely a different monster than uh, than Watkins Glen here. And uh, it looks like you got a bit of a handle here, currently sitting uh, P2 here for the race. So do, do you feel like this is going to be a little bit of a bounce back race? Are we going to be talking to you uh, before the race and maybe after the race as well? 
Well, I'm really hoping you're talking to me after the race. Um, last week was tough. I didn't really do a lot of testing prior, and unfortunately, I brought the wrong car. Um, the I ran the Audi, and it was like three tenths slower down the straightaway compared to the Ferrari. So, even though we qualified well, it was really hard to keep pace with them. Um, so I did my due diligence. We tested every car this week to figure out which one we thought was best, and so far, so good. It's 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 amazing how much testing the different cars does week in and week out. I mean, you can be in the Ferrari one week, feels absolutely great, best car in the field, and then you get to the next track, and it just feels like, well, we'll, we'll keep it PG friendly, but uh, dog poop. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah. and, and the, you'll you'll find that it's a completely different car. You know, one week the the Mercedes will be the best, one week the Porsche will be the best. How much time and 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 prep do you put into to selecting a car for the race? Um, generally spend, I generally run about 15 to 20 laps per car. Um, so as you can imagine, some of these tracks we go to that have these almost two minute lap times, it, it takes some time, but, uh, you know, luckily for me, I got nothing else to do. <laughs> that certainly helps out. Well, we'll see if you can uh, bounce back here a little bit and get it inside the top five, hopefully inside the top three. And we'll talk to you again after the race, but just in case we don't, who do you want to give a shout out to or thanks to before we let you go? Uh, need to, th need to thank my sponsor, Simrat Market, Garage Beer, Elwood Designs, um, and, of course, uh, my own company, Rider Racing Development, that, that sits on the car every week. All right. Well, wish you good luck out there. See if you can uh, take this thing down here from the pro, uh, pro Division. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. That is uh, your drivers here for the pre-race interviews tonight. That was the 56 of A.J. Roderick, and then previously that was the 196 of Jay Little. But we are ready to get this thing fired off. The, the drivers are heading to the grid, so we'll take a look at the rundown from qualifying and starting with the pro class we've got Craig Jancic on the pole with a 144.044 AJ Roderick in second, Jim Dutton Tim Ponzi, Herbert Pineda Joe, uh, Joseph uh, Carnes Frank Bassano, Skylar Vicroy Brandon Powell, Siviani Madrigal your top 10 and then going through the rest of the pro order we have uh, uh, Dan Marrera starting 11th John Seamer Stephen Price, and then the only one not putting a time down, Peter Muller, will be starting in 14th. In the AM class, it is going to be Jim Herrick on the pole, and uh, he certainly uh, wants to, to get back up there after last week. Antonio Diaz in second, Randy Ayers, Jason Potter, Christian Torres, Brandon Potts, Jason Potts, Glenn Lazan, Jay Little, and Justin Tucker making up your top 10. And then rounding out the field is going to be Ian Wilson, Ryan Farron, and uh, Tanner Bryant. Tanner Bryant, the only one not putting in a time here as well. But good size field out here tonight. Looks like we got 27 cars that are ready to take the uh, the green flag. And uh, taking a look at the uh, the manufacturers out there, we're, uh, we're certainly represented a lot by the Ferrari and the Porsche. But Lamborghini on top of the boards for first and second there in the pro class. It seems like that the Lamborghini has been getting a lot of love lately, um, and it's it's kind of surprising that uh, it's it's kind of coming out of the shadows. It's it's been on the service now for for a little bit, but it, it always kind of just gets you know seem to be left behind. But it seems like recently the Lambo is getting a lot of love. Yeah, and I uh, when I got into practice with them last night, I only have two GT3 cars, and uh, I was deciding whether to do the the Ferrari or the the Porsche. And I've actually been doing some officials in the Ferrari here lately, so I went ahead and jumped in it to try to get some laps in it. But by the sounds of it, Carl, I need to probably buy every GT3 car and uh, get get comfortable in, in all of them because the way that you can just change from track to track, and uh, I, got a, I got a lot of work ahead of me, Carl. Yeah, quite a bit. I mean, it's it, realistically, I mean, for, for me at least, I, I try and figure out what car I feel most comfortable with and when it kind of fits my drive and stuff because every car handles differently. You know, like we've talked about before, some have, uh, you know, a little bit more oversteer, some have a little bit more understeer, some are a little more balanced, but maybe not as fast. Some are just out and out, you know, fast out there, but they're, they don't take the corners well. So you really just, you got to find one that fits your driving style. And uh, to me, sticking with it is, is the best option because you get used to that car and you get used to the kind of nuances and, and how the car likes to take corners, how the car potentially snaps and things like that. And that's what you want to be ready for. You, you may have a car that is, you know, a tenth or two off pace, maybe even a half a second off pace, but 
if you're running that fast car and you're not comfortable with it, it doesn't really matter if you're in the fastest car or not. You're not going to be putting those times down anyway. So you're better off just finding a car you're comfortable with and, uh, and rocking that thing for the season. Yeah, I was doing some officials in the, the GT3s with the Ferrari at Sebring, and I, I mean, it's the only car you could run in, in that, but, like, I uh, didn't feel very comfortable in that car, but I, you know, recently logged a lot of laps in it, so um, I feel a lot better in the Porsche when I'm out there in it, but I probably need to get the rest of these cars, and then maybe there's one out there that, that's going to suit my style a little bit better, whatever style that is. Well, we are green flag at racing here at Watkins Glen. Marty's waving that flag with all his might as we race down into turn number one. Side by side still for the lead, but Jansen is going to take it out of turn number one. And we'll take a look and see. Looks like everybody is going to indeed make it through, actually. Uh, and let me, let me check that again. And actually, it is your pole sitter oh. for the AM class. We'll take a look at it again here. Seen somebody get wide. And three wide into the corner. And it looks like oh Herrick. My, oh no. Yeah, Herrick and uh, the 80, or the uh, yeah the 87 of Antonio Amadano Diaz just got hooked together, and that is major damage there for the 40. And certainly not inside the mid window at this point. So he's gonna have to run that thing for quite some time before he can get into the the pits and get those repairs done. As, see them on the track back there pretty far behind at this point but Jancic out in the lead Roderick in that second trying to hold on to Ponzi already up into third place already trying to get up there and make a name for himself Jim Dutton is going to fall back to fourth and then uh, making up your top five is going to be Herbert Pineda down in the AM class it is Randy Ayers in front and uh, We've seen this last week before he ended up getting uh, tangled up with um who was it brain fart right now um but getting tangled up in uh, in turn one and had a, uh, a big incident and it kind of really took him out of his race but back out there in front right now as jason potter dan Barrera, christian torres and uh, john seamer are going to make actually uh sorry brandon potts and jason potts are going to make up your top five Randy is. He's pretty much always been in the in the Porsche. I don't think I've seen him race anything else from from last season. It seems like a, I guess uh, it's a car that he's just comfortable with and and sticks with it. Whether it's like you said, if it's it may not be the speed car, but it's the car that he's comfortable in and and can log the and get the best laps that he can in that car. But like I said, that's that's really what it what it comes down to. I mean, it's it's something where you just want to find something that you're comfortable with and, and just keep running that to get a feel for it. And that's what uh, that's what these guys believe they're doing here. But good start from the field here as just the uh, the incident there in, in turn one so far. But from there, they've been uh, for the most part clean. A little bit of a uh, excuse me, a little bit of an off track here from Tanner Bryant at the uh, the back of the pack. And uh, there's, there's nothing Ooh. too wrong with that. Just run a little bit wide there, but plenty of uh, runoff there and gets the 55 back on track, hanging out to the uh, back of the field there. But other than that, we've been nice and clean here to start this thing. And Jancic out to about a three quarter second lead as these guys definitely uh, don't mind taking a little bit wide in, in some of these corners. There's, there's some nice good runoff. This corner right here, a little hairpin, a little you know, almost a uh, 180 degree corner that takes you back onto the uh, the main track, if you want to call it that, the one that NASCAR runs on. To me, that is the trickiest corner. I mean, how did you feel out there running with uh, with the guys last night? Was there a corner or two that were, were just kind of kicking you in the butt? Yeah, that one, I, I couldn't quite figure out the, um, the style or the, the proper way to run it, I guess. And I didn't know uh, you know what gear to be in or how much to down you know how, how to get it to rotate or whatever but um and the other thing was trying to trying to uh, figure out the track limits because in turn you know the turn one there you can get that thing out there pretty wide without getting an off track and i didn't really know that the first couple laps and then you try to push the limits and see what you can get before you do get that off track or you're out of bounds or whatever but um but definitely that that left hander coming back into the main part of the track was this is probably the trickiest part for me, definitely. Because I'm pretty comfortable everywhere else, you know. And and then the, 
getting through there, but that, that, that corner was uh, it's kind of giving me a little bit of a hiccup. Yeah, I think the uh, if there's if there's ever a time for me to, to like the bus stop, I, I kind of like it in the uh, in the GT3s. You know, I feel like just it handles well and it, it kind of flows through pretty nicely. I mean, and, and like the NASCARs, the you know, trucks, whatever that they may be, it just it scares me every time I go through that bus stop. But it, it's definitely a little bit more understanding in the in the GT and the, you see how quick these guys enter and exit the uh, the bus stop here in the GT3s. Yeah, I wonder what kind of what kind of uh, what spots of this track would be the you know the the trouble spots and or the, like the passing spots. For me, getting into that bus stop was kind of tricky at first until you understand that curb, the first curb, because <laughs> you don't want to you don't want to get too much of it. Because I got too much of it a couple times in the Ferrari, and uh, she she caught air, and uh, she don't like that. Yeah, yeah, I, I completely uh, agree with that. I think the. Uh, <laughs> I think that the biggest the biggest chance that you're going to have for for passing, obviously, going to turn one is is going to be a, a big passing opportunity. The bus stop, you, you can make a pass, but you, you really have to have a comfortability and an understanding of the guy that you're passing because it takes a lot of skill to to even think about going Tim side Ponzi's by side. Right there. But there you go, Tim Ponzi is going to go ahead and make that pass going in and through the bus stop. So I mean, if if you have the majority of your car in front of the guy that you're racing maybe you take that shot there at the uh, the bus stop if you get a good run through the yeses but uh right here i mean it, this is kind of another corner where you can possibly set it up the inside because a lot of times guys will, will kind of start it on the outside and you can sneak up on the inside through the uh, the hairpin here a lot of different ways to, to tackle this corner um it's it's a possibility that you can get inside there and maybe make a pass and then uh, coming up right here Another passing opportunity under braking as your, your heart of the brakes here. Heading into the uh, the right hander, but I mean, those are, are are you know half the corners. So I would guess you could say there's there's a decent amount of passing opportunities, but it's all about setting up that pass. And there's not that many long straightaways other than kind of going through the S's in the back stretch, where you can kind of really wind it out there. So it's. It's probably, you know, a car that's a little bit more nimble getting through these corners, and, and maybe that's why you see the uh, the Lambo out there. Definitely why you see the Ferrari towards the, the front of the back here as well, because that car you can kind of throw it around a little bit and, and get it through the corners. It's typically a little bit better car through the corners here. And working out so far for, for Tim Ponzi here in second, and the Lambo is being uh, Craig Jancic and Andrew, or uh, AJ Roderick in the top three here. Yeah, I was wondering, you know, you come out of turn 11 and you come down the front stretch and like if you can get a good run off 11 and get a lot of draft there and kind of be on somebody's rear end going into one and then use that momentum to carry yourself up to the S's and maybe get alongside them before we get to the, uh, the bus stop there would be a, like the hot zone of, of passing here. Yeah, I mean, again, it's... Can you go too wide through the S's? Yes, but those those walls feel like they, they close in on you. It feel like it's a, a bit of a cattle shoot at some times uh, going up through the S's. So you really want to kind of focus on that exit and, and put all your energy into uh, getting a good exit and uh, run down that back stretch so you can try and make that pass. Little issue here for one of our previous interview guys here, the 196 J Little. A little oh. bit of a bump there, a little bit of a slide. and. Oh, no. Ooh. Big impact with the uh, the outside wall. That didn't like really any wow. damage. Wow! Yeah, he's got a, got a good bumper on that thing. So yeah, they uh, they glued that thing on there pretty well. Uh, hopefully, they didn't get any wow. uh, damage backing up there. But yeah, the uh, the Ferrari holding together pretty well there. I mean, uh, a lot of times we see uh, the front end or the back end just you know kind of fall off with a, with a, a bad gust. But uh, it looks like he made it through that one pretty cleanly. I'm sure he's going to have some damage to repair when he comes in, but these guys do have one fast repair to work with. But as it stands right now, Craig Jansen leading at the pro class by 1.2 seconds over Tim Ponzi, who's moved up two spots now. And then you got Randy Ayers here leading at the AM class by about a second over Jason Potter, as looks like we might have had another issue here. This is Brian Farron here towards the back, and saying that he crashed and this could just be a little bit off track now a little bit sideways here again that's the corner right there that, that i was talking about that's 
like almost 180 degrees. Mm -hmm. Back end just it just likes to get free there for some reason. I mean, I, I don't understand it. It's now that gets that much off camber. Um, you're not really you know having a big elevation change, but for some reason it's just I don't know if it's a dirty track there or what the case is. Yeah, I was kind of just being ginger through there because I didn't know the the limits and, and just trying to kind of baby my way through there, but I couldn't get through there with, with too much amount of speed because I didn't, it was, it would want to step out a little bit. And, but you, you kind of were just trying to get into the throttle too early because you feel like you can, but you're not straight enough yet to, to be able to do that. It feels like it because there's a lot of run out there and there's a lot of, Space, but that's why I was wondering if I was <laughs> taking, you know, doing it wrong, or or needed to do a different angle or different, you know, different entry or, or what. I think it's just it's one of those corners where you want to get on the gas, you want to get on the gas, you want to get on the gas. You just you have to wait, you have to be patient to, to finally kind of work that full throttle on there. But see the pass there from Sevigny Madrigal moves himself up to ninth place, smack dab in the middle of. Uh, Brandon Powell in front of him and Frank Masano behind him right now. So this is the battle for 8th, 9th, and 10th. And uh, towards the, uh, the back half of this top 10 is where you're finding the uh, the Mercedes here tonight. We've seen uh, Montreal certainly have a, uh, an interesting run uh, last week. Had a uh, fast car, but dropped back a little bit. Got tangled up a few times. Certainly uh, did not finish where he uh, assumed he would probably finish. And maybe the, uh, the mark not working too well here tonight at Watkins Glen, but See him uh, on the move, trying to move himself up through the top 10 right now in the ninth place. Over in the M class, we see Jason Potts and Brandon Potts here looking to do battle. This is fourth and fifth here in the M class. Uh, which, Pot, which one? Brandon won, won last week, is that right? Or Jason? Uh, I believe it was Jason last week. Yeah, it was Jason. It was Jason Potts and then Jason Pot P Potter. Yeah, it was a yep. tongue twister last week for you. Yeah, we had three J's in the uh, in the, the, oh, yeah, the Jay Little with third. Yep, Jason that's Potts, right. Jason Potter, and Jay Little. Yep, exactly. So, <laughs> but good battle here between the, the the two pots here as Jason looking for a way to get around, but right now just kind of hold and serve. To get a little bit close there as Jason Potter was He's running peaking. down. Randy Ayers, but Randy now sneaking out here a little bit, and both these guys are in the Porsche, so it just could be, you know, one part of the track, one guy likes a little bit more than the other, but it's, you know, that's another thing that you, you sometimes find is, you know, there's certain sections of, of the track where one car may be just more dominant than uh, another manufacturer out there, and you see the other times kind of ebb and flow, and, and that's where you gotta, you know, get an understanding of your car, and figure out, okay, well, my car is really fast through the S's, so if I'm going to make a pass, I need to do it there, because if not, I'm going to be losing time the rest of the, of the track here, so it's it's more than just getting in the car, putting that hammer down, and, and turning left and right. There, there's a lot of mental that goes on in racing. Yeah, that's something, like, I'm eager to learn, because obviously ovals and roads are different, but the mental part of of road racing because it's not just you get up behind somebody and you, you pass them you have to like you just said if you're faster in a certain spot of the track use that to your advantage use everything that you can to your advantage to get around somebody or or be faster or whatever and there's so much and to learn which i'm eager to learn that's why i try to try to I gotta tell you, it's like, I gotta learn something from each race. So if I, if I feel like I don't learn something from that race, then it was just, not that it was a total waste, but like, I wasted an opportunity there to but learn it, something about the car, the track, the situation, whatever, you know, and, and try to learn something. Well, and, and the thing is, you know, everybody talks about putting in practice laps and putting in all this time and, and things like that. And, and listen, I don't discount that at all. You definitely need to, to put laps in and figure out where, where the fast lanes are on the track. But at the end of the day, nothing can compare to getting out here and racing and competing because when you're out there practicing, you're, you're all by yourself and you know you can go out there and run the same line 10, 15 times over and over again and figure out, okay, this is the best line, this is the fastest line. 
okay, what happens when you get put off that line when you have to make a pass mm -hmm. in an actual race? Yep. If you're not you're not practicing that, you're not practicing going wide and in turn one or taking a different line through the S's to try and set up a pass or having to break a little bit earlier or later going into the bus stop. It's, it's things that you, you don't think about practicing. You need to get out there in the race and uh, experience it. And that's that's how you get better, just getting out there with some competition and, and trying to uh, oh, we got a crash. test your metal here. And uh, that looked like Herbert Pineda. We'll take a look at it here one more time. 105, got a little grass there. And oh, just a hey, little uh, bit too much curb. And that is a pretty hard impact there. Enough that he ended up towing back into the pits from that incident. As you see there. That's the exactly what I did her. last night. You get too much of that curb and she just goes airborne and you're belong for the ride. Yes, and it's tough because you do want to take a lot of curb going into the end of the bus up there and you almost want to you know, really straighten out those first couple corners and then just kind of roll through the, uh, the next two. But you take just a little bit too much and you get all four tires onto that curb and yeah, it just launches you as it did there for, for Herbert. And that's the other thing, like trying to trying to get through that that bus stop. Uh, I'm trying to figure out uh, like how to do that, like where to slow down, slow down before, slow down during. You know, there's there's so much it, that goes into that, and I'm sure a lot of them are different. As we got another car around there. Yeah, that is well, Jason Potter, back. the one that was chasing your leader here Second in the place. class. Second place in. The M class no more Ooh. just gets a little bit too much goose on the throttle there and uh, now is a long painful wait wait Ooh. until you can find a gap here in the cars to get that thing get to turn right around and that is just that is so painful I mean it's all credit to him because it's, it's very easy for a driver to just get frustrated and and gun it early and take out one or two more cars in the process but he does the uh, the gentlemanly thing there and waits for field to get around him before he gets back fired off but that is a big hurt piece right there and that's going to put christian torres now christian ortiz torres in second as he is battling uh, on track here with uh, brandon potts i'm sorry uh, with, with peter moeller right in front of him but peter moeller up there in the uh, pro class but Torres now is in second place, but he is five and a half seconds adrift of your leader in the AMP class. So Ayers trying to run away and hide here early on in the race as we are 17 minutes in of this 40 lap race. And Tim Ponzi is closing in on your overall leader here, Craig Jancic. So Craig is not just running away with this thing from the front. Ponzi wants to go back to back. Yeah, these were the two fastest cars in the practice last night. Ponzi had the fastest time. I don't know about like speed or pace, but Ponzi's uh, definitely a fast car everywhere we go. Of course, got the uh, the nice uh, Pro Racing CRN paint scheme on there, so certainly appreciate him for the uh, for the shoutouts for that. But take a look at the uh, the fast times on the track right now, and uh, these guys uh, for their fast laps running in the 144s with 144.27 by Craig Jancic, the, uh, the fastest lap on uh, the track so far. And uh, checking out just a little bit on that last lap as he was about three tenths of a second faster than Ponzi. So trying to, uh, you know, maybe just uh, cool down those tires for a lap or two and now getting back on it here. But Ponzi not letting them go here and uh, could have a battle for second place over in the AMP class as well as Brandon Potts now right behind and right on the back bumper here of Torres. This is the battle for second, not too far behind these guys. Right there, you see him in the picture. Jason Potts is right there as well. So three car battle for second, third, and fourth. Yeah, and to get back to what we were kind of talking about before that uh, crash, um, um, getting out on the track by yourself, like you said, is, is okay, is good, but that's why you know, for me, getting into this, I would always get in, you know, to a league race or whatever and watch other people and try to see what they're doing. And that just is so much more important and more valuable to me to try to understand what he's doing with the car to get that lap or how he's taking that turn or 
or whatever the situation may be, but just try to learn from other people in real life experiences. You know, like you said, how am I, how do I, you know, if I'm in this spot and I'm trying to get this car passed, but I got to take a different line. How do I do that? We're seeing Brandon Vance have to do that right now, taking the outside for a couple of these corners and makes that Lambo stick on the outside and makes the pass here for second place. Jason Bond's now right behind. He's trying to do the same thing here as Christian Ortiz Torres under fire here from uh, both of the pots as Brandon gets by, Jason right behind him as we got some good racing action here as we close in and now hit the halfway mark of this race. And uh, yeah, to your point, Joe, I mean, one of the things that you don't get in, in the official sessions, I mean, you can get out there and, and run officials and sure you can get some some ideas on on how you know that the track is going to be how the race is going to be if, if it happens to be that same uh, track of that week for you guys but you don't have the camaraderie and and that's what you know some of these uh some of these leaks possibly have as it looks like we had uh, another car there i just want to check on that that was joseph carnes here stuck in the uh the bus stop but you know, getting out there and running at the same thing, Ooh, same turns. exact yep. thing right oh. there. And that was a hard, hard impact. Um, you know, we have leagues like like here, the, you know, the casual sim racers league where you have some, some really good fast guys, but you also have, you know, some of your, your amateur class guys down here. So you'll find, uh, you know, wherever your racing level is, you'll have some guys to compete against, but they have those practices as well as the race. You know, they had the practice last night, they had the race tonight. So you get plenty of track time to, to kind of figure it out and figure out what works for you, what's fast, and one of the faster guys to go back there and you can watch their laps and see what they're doing differently. And, uh, you know, you can talk to them, you can ask them. It's, that's one thing that's, that's great about league racing. I, I know the same thing happens over in the core GT series, that the guys will just sit around and share lap data. They'll, they'll talk about the different corners you know, what they're doing for braking, everything like that, what kind of, you know, brake bias they're running. And it's it's great, you know, it's it doesn't help when you're holding things close to your vest. You know, you, mm -hmm. you, want, you want some good competition out there, and, you know, you, you got guys that are complaining about, oh, you know, the, the race is not good, or there's there's a lot of weapons out there. Well, talk to them, help them out. You know, yeah. you're, you're only gonna be, the league's only gonna be as good as the drivers. And uh, you as drivers, need to take it amongst yourselves to uh, to help each other just get a little bit better. I mean, you know, maybe not give away all your secrets, but you know, maybe eight out of ten. Yeah. Oh, you got to leave a little bit, but but it is. <laughs> I, I, and I think it's like it's, you know, flattering when somebody comes to you and it's like, hey, what are you doing here? Or can you help me get through, you know, what, what do I need to do? Or, you know, and, and try to help somebody along. Like, I hope I can get to that point. I mean, it may not happen in road racing, but I hope that I can get you know to that point where people are coming to me for advice because I would love that and would try to try to help people get better because you know we're doing this for fun. This is supposed to be fun, so like let's let's all have fun and and running up front and running fast times is fun. Like nobody likes to run on the back. I mean, mostly that's where a lot of people start, but we, we like to get up front and you know have have the. Uh, have an interview at the end of a race. Yeah, I mean, listen. At the end of the day, of course, everybody wants to win. I mean, that's that's the goal. You don't you don't go into the race, you know, thinking it's just well, I'm, I'm going to lose, so let, let's just you know, get this over with. That that's you know, nobody really has that mindset. Or, or you know, why would you do it? You know, you, you of course want to try and do your best and try and win every week. But you know, it, it's the guys that that get into the leagues that that's all they care about. That you know, those are the, are the drivers that you want in your league. You don't want the guys mm -hmm. to come in there and all they care about is winning or, you know, as soon as they're out of the championship running, they're not showing up anymore. Those are the guys that you build your league on. You build your league on, on the guys that oh, no, are fuck. towards the oh, back. No. And uh, Masato, oh, a little bit late coming. break in the, to the bus stop and did not work out at all for the 38. He's going to try and limp it back on here, but that thing looks pretty hurt and he may have to tow it back to pit lane and that's what he does. Oh, he does. Oh, he was getting pressured big time. But, I mean, you know, when I started off, I was, you know, nowhere near the front in the league that I was running. But, you know, I ran behind those fast guys, you know, for race after race and, uh, you know, picked up on some things. You know, picked up on how they're braking or, or how they're taking corners or how they're saving tires. And uh, that's how you get better. You don't get, you, you can get into a league and 
you know, win 10 out of 10 races, okay, what'd you learn? Nothing. Because mm -hmm. all the guys were, were slower and you never got to learn from anybody that was faster than you. As a, I thought that was a big move up. there. Got me a little confused. With <laughs> Jancic makes the right hand turn. He's going to bring it to the pit lane as pit stops are definitely commencing. We had a lot of guys already coming to pits. Still have uh, 12 guys that have yet to come down that pit road, but that's going to give the lead to Tim Ponzi here for the moment in the pro class over in the M class. Randy Ayers still is your leader, and he has yet to pit as well. We'll see if he comes in this time by as he is going to stay out for, for one more lap. But so far, so good. I mean, these guys are putting on a, a great race and some good battles all throughout the field here. We're trying to highlight some of the, uh, the close ones here for you and uh, some good battles there for the top three as well. Now we'll see what the pit stops do because, you know, we talk about a week in, week out. Pit stops are so, so important. Getting in that pit stall, getting out of that pit stall as quick as possible. I mean, and once you're in that stall, it's up to the pit crew. You, you can't do anything different other than, you know, if you're taking tires or not, or if you're taking a certain amount of fuel, that's it. You know, your time is your time, but getting the in and off pit road as quick as possible can gain you seconds of time. And when you're running, you know, half a second to a second behind somebody for the entire race, you can gain that second and a half, two seconds very quickly on, on pit road if you're nailing all your marks. And you see how this thing shakes out as you have definitely Starting to go through this uh, the pit cycle here. 26 minutes into this race, 14 to go here. And I gotta ask you guys out there, who do you think is gonna bring this thing home? He's been seeing Craig Jancic and, and Randy Geyers lead their respective classes here for a majority of the race. But we all know that, uh, that this league here at CSRL definitely mixes it up here towards the end. I, I guess I can't say that about last week. It was pretty much a foregone conclusion, but what do you guys got? Who are you guys rooting for? Who do you guys want to see? And we can certainly jump around to your to your favorite driver out there as well. Don't feel afraid to uh, to point in the comments there. Unfortunately for uh, for Grant, he uh, he got to watch Frank uh, take a, a bad entry into the bus stop and probably end his night here. But other than that, good racing here. Randy Ayers now going to make that right hand turn into pit lane. Sivani Montregal is your new leader here in the pro as he has yet to come in the pits. So maybe trying to get one more lap here of clean air. Maybe that market some really good fuel mileage. But he's going to go around here and uh, complete one more lap before he comes in. Yeah, I was interested to see if, how long Ponzi was going to go there before he came down. I didn't know, uh, you know, we talked about last season, the, the short pitting was, was kind of the, the way to go. It looks like he's going to come out right behind him here. Yeah, really status quo here as, as uh, Jansen comes in at lap 14, and Ponzi comes in at lap 15, and that really no change, half a second between first and second still. It's still Jansen in the number three out in front of the 46 of Ponzi, trying to do everything he can to reel him in. Back a little bit further yeah, in the field here. Looks like we got Skylar Vicroy trying to take a challenge to Brandon Powell for sixth. Yeah, the only real change was it looked like Roddick left a lot of time there, a couple seconds, from because he was kind of right there with him. Not, I mean, not right on him, but within striking distance. But looks like that pit stop, that pit cycle didn't serve him too well. Yeah, it looks like uh, you know the, the pit lane time lost a, a little bit of time overall, but about a half a second longer in his pit stalls. We'll take a look at the, uh, the pit times here as up here. The amount of pit stops, we don't care about that. <laughs> For some reason, yeah, there. So you see about a half a second longer for his for his pit time right there. And I feel like that could be potentially where he lost some time. But I mean the overall pit time was only a tenth of a second slower, so Maybe a, a little mistake, maybe, uh, you know, his out lap or his in lap was a little bit slower than, than the others here, but Madrigal now in the pits, and we'll see where he cycles back out to. Currently down now in fifth as he gets back going here. Brandon Powell is now coming by, and there's Skylar Vicroy as well, so we're going to fall back down here to seventh place as uh, Vicroy just going to sneak on by here, but up front, you see right there, weaving back and forth here a little bit is Jancic. He knows Ponzi is right there, and Ponzi was dominant last week. Again, looking to go back-to-back -to, -back to start this season off. 
and uh, Jancic trying to get back to his, his winning ways here. Champion in the Pro Class two seasons ago and would love to taste the, uh, the top step here one more time. But he's got his hands full here to finish this thing out with about 10 and a half minutes to go. Down in the AM class, we got the Pots doing the battle again here, and Jason now is in front of Brandon. So Brandon's the one doing the chasing right now. This is second and third, as they are about five seconds behind that Randy Iyer. So Randy having uh, a little bit uh, of a bounce back week this week and really uh, exercises some demons, I, I would say so, uh, so far. And he's got 10 more minutes to grab that first win. Now, if you're Ponzi and you, you're maybe you're holding back here, what time or at what point do you try to start putting pressure on Craig if you have that extra pace? I feel like he's he's already been putting uh, pressure on there. He's been you know staying right there. He's waiting for Craig to to make that mistake, and sometimes it, it takes a while. Sometimes you got to pressure that guy for 10, 15, or or, or in this case maybe close to 20 laps before. Uh, he makes a mistake, if he makes a mistake at all, but I, I think Ponzi is, he's already on that loud pedal. He's, he's trying to, to do everything he can to, to fluster Jancic, but uh, no chink in the armor right now for the three team. But good battle right here as Vic Roy got by Powell for a brief second, but Powell now back into fifth place. As had not talked about the man in fourth place. And uh, that is Mr. Jim Dutton, and uh, Jim doing a uh, fantastic job out here tonight in the uh, in the Simpsons Porsche as he's running a, a good, solid fourth place started in third. So I thought we may be able to talk to uh, the man behind the curtains here at CSRL after the race, but he's going to need a little hookup from uh, one of the top three guys in front. You never know, maybe uh, Jansen and Ponzi mixed up a little bit, and he can sneak his way back up into the, uh, the podium spots. But good run here for... Mr. Jim Dutton. Jim Herrick, the man behind the 4D Racewear, one of the sponsors here in the CSRL. Obviously, we've seen him grab the pole. Fantastic run to get the pole, and then it lasted, well, about a half a corner before he ended up <laughs> hooking up together with the, uh, the 87 of Antonio Avendano Diaz, and Herrick got the, uh, the brunt of the, uh, the damage there, but he has that car back repaired and really doing a good job fighting back here in seventh place right now, but he's got the pace that he can definitely close in and uh, potentially grab a top five before this thing is over, but he's gonna have to hustle. We're down to about seven and a half minutes here. Yeah, I'd say top four, top five is still in the realm here for, for Herrick and you know, he's got speed. So, well, I mean, what a comeback to be able to even get back to where he is, but I think he's, he's wanting more and I'm sure he's digging hard right now to try to Try to get up there and salvage what could have been a, a better better outcome. Well, as we typically do late in the race, he will we'll turn the mics off, give you guys out there and gals uh, a little love to hear. We'll do a brief one here tonight because I don't want to go away from this action. There's plenty of racing action out here tonight, but we'll go ahead and uh, let you guys uh, crank it up here and uh, listen to sounds here of the CSRL GT Series.
Some of the sights and sounds here of the CSRL GT Series. We are getting towards the end of this race. Got about a minute and a half left. And we'll take a look uh, real quick over at our man in the stands, uh, Barney. And uh, he shouldn't be waving that, uh, that white flag yet, but he will be waving it this time by as uh, kind of lost one more here. There he is. And just, just sitting there, just jamming out. Probably got some tunes there on the, uh, on the headphones. <laughs> So hopefully he's uh, paying attention here because these guys are going to be coming around this time by for the white flag. And you're looking at first and second overall right here. This thing is not over at all, Ponzi, all over the backside of the number three of Jancic. So Jancic's going to have some fight on his hands here for the last lap. You see down there and the AM class definitely got some battles going on there inside the top five and all the way down to sixth place as well. But White flag in the air this time by. Somebody woke up Barney and he is waving with all his might. These guys got one more lap to go here at Watkins Glen. Barnes got it down to about two tenths of a second. See if he has anything to try to make a last lap pass here and try to steal this one away from Craig who has just been out front the entire time. May take a send somewhere if he decides he wants to do that. Good run out of the S's. Uh, yep, See Jansen blocking the inside, and Ponzi is going to stay in line here. We got Lambo in front of Ferrari, in front of Lambo right here for the top three in the pro class. Who's going to get through this lap quicker right now? Jansen still holding on to a three tenths of a second lead down the AM class. Randy Ayers lead down a little bit, down to 3.5, but still a very comfortable margin. This is not comfortable at all here for Jansen as he has got a mirror full of that bright green 46. A little bit of a dummy Ooh. there from Ponzi, making him think about the inside there, but maybe cost himself a little bit as he tries to get a good run out of the corner as they head towards the end of the boot right now, up to almost a half a second here for Jancic. He's been trying to hold off Ponzi pretty much this entire race as Ponzi get up there in the second pretty quickly. And it's been a two-car race at the front here. A.J. Roderick held up there with him for a little bit, but then once the other uh, pit stop happened, fell back, and it's been a two-dog race here. But Jancic has been the top dog at this entire race. Maybe oh, one last Ponzi. ditch effort there for Ponzi. A little bit too wide there. <laughs> and it's going to be the number three, Craig Jancic, getting it done here at the Glen. What a dominating performance, Craig Jancic. Dominating in the smallest fashion right there as Bonzi <laughs> finishing three quarters of a second behind in that second. And you see AJ Roderick will get the pre and post interview as we'll get him up there in third. Jim Dunn is going to finish right there in fourth place. Brandon Powell is going to sneak by and, uh, or not sneak by, hold off Skylar Vickroy. They had an epic battle to the end there, and Powell gets it by point. Zero two five seconds over in the AM class. This one's still finishing up over here. Randy Ayers down to three seconds here, but a nice, easy, Ooh, yeah, comfortable bots. win. Last week's uh, Jason Botts down there in, in ninth. Randy yeah, Ayers yeah, is going to get it done here and uh, win here at the Glen. Second place is going to go to Brandon Potts. Third is going to be Christian Ortiz Torres. Len Lazan sneaking up there as some guys <laughs> taking some evasive action there at the end. But you have Lazan getting through at the end. So trying to look back and see exactly what happened here. I don't there see really six. anything on SDK showing that there was uh, any kind of issues here. But there were definitely some close battling as we were watching it there, even on the uh, love to hear it. but. What a finish here, what a race. What else, huh? This thing was was good all the way through both fields here, and it was it was kind of hard to take your eyes off of any of the action here. But, I mean, I, again, I say, Joe, I, I know you like your oval racing. I, I like oval racing too, but, man, there's a lot of good action here on the road. Yes, there is, and, and um, I'm beginning to to see that and understand that and um <laughs> it's it's a different type of racing but it's it's fun and it's it's interesting it's it's challenging which i love about racing is the, the challenge of it is is trying to 
you know, quote unquote, conquer a beast or, you know, it's, it's just the, the, the challenge of being able to figure out a car and figure out how to drive that car fast, you know, and whether that's going left only or if that's going right and left and up and down, it's, it's a challenge and, and I'm, I'm ready to take that challenge on with, you know, with these, with these road races. And, I, and I've enjoyed doing this broadcast for this league because it's opened up so much for me. It's, it's, it's opened up your eyes for sure to, to road racing and, and these guys over at CSRL, even though they're, uh, you know, they got half the field in the pro class, half the field in the AM class, even even the AM class, they, they know what they're doing here. They, they put on a, uh, a heck of a good show. Let's go ahead and, uh, and wrap this thing up, put a bow on it and uh, start bringing in some of our top three guys here for, for both the classes and well, you know, it, he didn't get a chance to to talk to us enough apparently in the uh, the pre race interviews. So we'll go ahead and and bring in uh, the driver of the uh, the fifty six, AJ. Uh, you said you wanted to be here for pre and post, and you made it. But do you feel like you maybe left something out there? Did something happen with the uh, the pit stop there? Because you were you were hanging with those two guys, and then all of a sudden they checked out after the pit stop. Uh, they're just way better than I am. <laughs> um, <laughs> Enough said. There you go. <laughs> yeah. It was tough because as the track gets, you know, when we start in the morning like this, the track's so cool in practice and qualifying. And by the time our race ends, the track changes so much. And I've done a really bad job of managing tires. And I think that plays a such a huge role at the end. That's I think that's why they were so much faster is I just couldn't get the car to turn. I'd overworked the tire so much that it was just kind of hanging on, hopefully, you know, trying to manage the gap back to fourth. But, you know, if I would have done a better job managing tires early instead of trying to keep up with them, it may not have been too bad. So I gotta ask you, I see you in the Lambo here tonight. Two of the, the top three here in the pro class in the Lambo. We got uh two of the top four in the M class in the Lambo. What is what is the love affair with the Lambo all of a sudden? I mean, it's been a car that's that's been there for quite some time, but uh, you know, really not getting any kind of love, and all of a sudden it's it's getting shown a lot of love lately. I think it's just the car of the week. Um, every track, you know, every track's got its its quirks, right? Um, with with Watkins Glen being such a fast track, we're, we're, there's only a couple corners that we really have to break hard for. Otherwise, it's very minimal braking. Um, so it seems like the Lambo does really well with the real fast flowy tracks. And I think that makes a pretty big difference. Um, I didn't, I actually didn't test the Ferrari this week to, to know, but it seemed like um, Tim was really good through the brake zones and through some of the slower corners compared to me, but through the fast stuff, it seemed like I had a little bit of a, an advantage, but um, you know, part of that could have just been over overdriving the car early, um, you know, before I burned the tires up. Well, either way, you uh, you head on there for a, a third place. You started in second, so, I mean, I, you obviously had a, a, a good handle on this track and uh, a nice little bounce back here after uh, Interlagos last week. So, good run here tonight. Uh, do, you, do you look to uh, to next week at uh, Road America to, to try and double up here in the, uh, in the USA and, and have another good finish? I sure hope so. Um, Road America is one of my favorite tracks. Um, and unfortunately, it's probably one of the only tracks that I haven't driven in real life, but I've been to. Um, so I always look forward to, to Road America. It's such a unique track in its own as well. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what car choice ends up being best for next week if we're, you know, back in the Lambo or, um, you know, it might be Ferrari week. It's hard to say. Yeah, I mean, you said like here tonight at Watkins Glen, it's it's for the most part a fast, flowy track, and uh, Road America's got a little bit of everything. I mean, you got the, the the long carousel there, you got the the slow corners there down in turn five, you got the long straightaways. So, good luck picking a car next week. <laughs> but for the yeah, I'll be uh, I'll be busy up and I'll be busy all the way up until next Wednesday trying to or, you know pulling my hair out trying to decide what car I want to go with. Exactly. Well, either way, take some time to celebrate the third place finish here tonight. Before we let you go, who do you want to give a shout out to again? Uh, give a shout out to my sponsors again: um, Simrap Market, Elwood Designs, uh, Garage Beer, Valvoline. Um, these these guys all jump aboard and and help you know our our journey through our uh, our fake racing. So appreciate everything that they do for us. Well, congratulations again on uh, your top three and. Uh, We'll see. Maybe we can uh, get a little bit uh, higher next week in the in the standings and uh, talk to you again here. 
I'm just saying, like, if this is going to be a thing where you interview me pre-race and then you get to interview me post-race, like, I'll do this every week with you guys if that's what the trick's going to be. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, listen, I, we, we, were, open. We, were, we were talking, yeah. we were talking <laughs> about your uh, your nicknames, and we, we can just call you AJ Hot Rod at this point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe maybe you're the good luck that I finally need. Um, so, yeah, if this if this helps out, I'll, I'll be out here every week pre-race for you guys ready and available. Well, normally, we're getting blamed for the uh, the broadcaster's curse, so I'll, I'll take the, uh, the luck anyway. I can get it. Yeah. All right. Enjoy the third place here, and we'll uh, talk to you hopefully next week. Sounds good. Thank you. Third place here tonight in the pro class, the 56 of AJ Roderick. Second place is the one that came in first last week. One step short here tonight. But, Joe, why don't you go ahead and take your second place here, the 46 of Tim Ponzi. Yeah, he, right, got, the win. he got the win last week. You come in second here. Uh, what was it going to take to get around Craig? Um. I was just kind of waiting for a mistake. Um, it was weird because, like, uh, and during practice, I, I had really good pace. And I don't think the track temp going up a couple degrees made that much of a difference. It just, for some reason, I just lost the mojo, I think. <laughs> so uh, I, I was happy to just kind of tag along. Hopefully he was pushing him into a mistake because I know the Lambo is a bit tricky around here. If you get it wrong, it goes wrong real quick. Uh, yeah, what's that? Yeah. I was talking to talking to Carl and trying to ask him at what point, if you had anything for Craig, would you was you gonna try to start pushing it to maybe get around him or get even closer to him? And it didn't really look like you got to him until maybe that last lap, and then you really put the pressure on him. Was that just by design, or was that when yeah. you finally got to him? Yeah, I was I was kind of saving tires a little bit because I knew I know that they were getting a little overheated, so. Uh, I was going to push the last two laps, uh, made a couple mistakes on the second to last. Uh, I made a couple mistakes even on the last. Uh, but, man, I mean, hats off to him, man. He drove a great race. Uh, as it, was, uh, it was everything I had, man. So yeah, he, like he stayed and... right there within a half a second of him just trying to see if he would make a mistake. And then he kind of went after it there the last couple laps and just, just wasn't enough. Craig was, uh, Craig was on it tonight. Yeah, yeah. I tip my cap to him, man. It was a uh, it was a great drive for him. Well, you got uh, first and a second to start the season, so uh, you're probably gonna keep that point points lead and uh, head on to Road America next week. Uh, how are we feeling about that one? Yeah, uh, gotta love Road America. Uh, looking forward to it. Uh, I'm gonna get some testing done to see uh, what car I'm gonna drive, and yeah, yeah, I love that place. It'll be, it'll, it'll be another fun one, I'm sure. Hopefully I can keep the, the mojo all the way through the race. <laughs> well, it's one I'm going to be not only broadcasting, but like uh, paying the special attention to because it will be the first race of the core season that I will be a part of. So um, oh, man. I'll, I'll, be, I'll probably be coming to you for some advice and then everybody <laughs> else in core to try to try to figure out how cars get around road courses and uh, uh, see what I can do in the, in the, in the core GT season uh, series next season. So um, oh, man, that's taking awesome. that leap you're of gonna, faith, you're gonna love it. Yep, yep. I'm ready for it. Uh, watching these guys in this league got me kind of jazzed up and pumped up to do it. So, and I've just been grasping at everything I could to uh, try well, to I, learn. I as tell much you as I what, I'll, I'll make you a deal, man. You uh, you teach me about going around in circles. I'll teach you about <laughs> breaking and going right. There we go. Alrighty. <laughs> All right. Do anybody you want to give a shout out to on that one? Yeah, thanks to you guys again, man. Uh, always, um, uh, the broadcasts are just amazing. Um, you know, thanks for for Jim for putting on the league and and uh, and for 4D for sponsoring. And uh, yeah, looking forward to hopefully talking to you guys again next week. All righty, well, uh, well, I'll definitely be talking to you. So <laughs> we'll let you get out of here <laughs> and uh, celebrate your second. <laughs> so, sounds good, buddy. All righty. That is your second place finisher in the pro class, the 46 of Tim Ponzi. Last but not least, we bring in your winner here tonight in the pro class and overall the three of Craig Jancic and uh, just a, a nice, easy drive out there tonight. No stress at all, right? I, I, I love this line from you. Um, definitely no pressure whatsoever from behind. No, um, no. You, had, you had your mirror turned uh, off, correct? Correct, hundred yeah, percent. Yeah. I didn't even know who was back there. I didn't. I, I, I've, I've never seen a green Ferrari on this surface before. <laughs> no, nah, man. Um, it was a lot of gap management, to be honest, because um, I tested this thing. The testing that I did was sixty-six degree track, 
and uh, let me just go ahead and hit the weather tab real quick and I'll see that you had uh, are currently sitting on an 88 degree track um, there was no front grip uh, my whole first uh, pre-fuel run was truly just tire management as if I was driving a um, as if I was driving a like NASCAR next gen here I'm um, just trying to take care of of the rear trying to make sure that the front gets stopped in enough time to keep it turned and um, we were able to actually do that pretty successfully um, without letting uh, Ponzi get within that half a second mark where you could try a lunge and um, it was actually really really effective and uh, I kind of wish that I could push as hard as I wanted to uh, Watkins Glen is my home track probably my favorite in the world and um, I think that I would have rather not have had to be a little cautious most of the time. But um, either way, you know, we were able to keep that gap managed. Um, I pit a lap earlier than I had to because I was trying to prevent Ponzi's undercut. And then he went and overcut me anyway. Uh, so that had me nervous for about a minute and 46 seconds. But we were able to you know, come back out the other side in good shape and uh, get another get a get a get a win here in this season. I'm really happy about it. Yeah, and you get a win uh, early on in the season uh, this time as well. It, it took a, a little bit till we uh, kind of seen your, your true colors last season, but you, you get it done early here for this one. Um, obviously, Fonzi seems like he's going to be a, a pretty big threat. He, he won the opener last year, but then got, kind of just got bounced around and kind of fizzled out and, and wasn't there able to show up to all the races as well. But now with the first and second, do, do you feel like he's he's your main competition, or, or do you think there's going to be some other guys uh, that are going to jump up here and uh, give a run for it? Everybody's kind of got their track, right? Um, I, I'd like to think that I can see myself as a top five contender every week. Uh, I think that's a realistic goal that I can set for myself. And, um, you know, anything that looks like a podium just is better than that, right? And um, I definitely feel like Ponzi is probably going to be the close competition. And uh, I do look forward to carrying that out over the remaining you know, stretch of the season. Um, I'm especially happy to be starting out on a really consistent note here. I'm going to miss next week, unfortunately. Um, it should be my only miss, so it will count as my drop race. Um, and I think that as long as there is a form of consistency, like top five in every week, not getting into any shenanigans uh, like I love to get into, um, I think that we might be all right, you know, keep ourselves uh clear of having to use you know uh, having to average in a, a really poor finish yeah a little bit less uh shenanigans here this week uh compared to the inner lagos and uh totally it was uh still not an easy drive with ponzi just hunting you down that whole time but so uh you're not going to see road america but the next one you come back to is is monza so i guess we'll we'll talk about monza here real quick what do you feel about monza it's uh it's certainly a, a fast track but those those little chicanes can really bunch up those cars they really can. And um, uh, there's word on the street that that could be our highest percent likelihood of a wet race as well. And um, I know that you, uh, you and I experienced a nice little wet race uh, Friday night. Yeah. yeah. And I had a hell of a good time doing that. And uh, I, I, I welcome it. Um, I think that anybody that didn't really spend a lot of time running GT3 in the wet yet will be in for quite a shock. And, uh, you know, we'll have to learn those tendencies for, for Monza. I do like Monza as a track. Um, it's not my best. I enjoy the driving experience. Um, so I actually really welcome the rain as an extra variable to, to hopefully be able to separate myself a little bit further from the rest of the guys. And, uh, you know, uh, I'm sad to be missing Road America. That <laughs> That's another one of my favorites. But um, it is what it is, and, and we'll deal with those consequences as the rest of the season carries out. Yeah, it's one of those things where uh, the track doesn't change. The layout's still the same, but the rain makes it seem like it's a brand new track. You have to relearn the entire track again. Brand new braking zones, brand new ways to, to take the corners. Maybe you're taking it on the outside of the corners to the inside. It's it's definitely a uh, a huge, huge different variable. But we'll see that uh, potentially in, in a couple weeks. But for now, congrats here on uh, the win. And uh, you're able to uh, to survive this one. And uh, like I said, uh, a little bit less, uh, less drama here tonight. But certainly uh, not a stress-free run. But you get it done here tonight. Congrats on the win who do you want to get a, a shout out to tonight yeah big thanks to uh the admin team here with me uh jim and, and rich all the rich couldn't make it tonight uh for for helping get everything squared away all the ducks in the row um thanks to you guys at core for the always amazing product uh carl good joe good to have you back this week 
Um, and uh, I really look forward to watching this one back. Thanks to the viewers as well. Um, and then thanks to all the people that support me individually. Um, Martin PC, Team Conti Sim Performance, Freebear and Hot Wings Morning Show, um, uh, Digital Sim Sports, all the, you know, uh, all, all my friends and, and family that tune in week, week to week. The best of the best. And uh, we'll see you all in two weeks. Absolutely. Well, and, and enjoy the uh, the one week off here, and we'll see you back here and see if you can do a double up over two weeks. So, Ten four, buddy. Congrats here tonight. Thank you, man. We'll see you. That is your winner here in the pro class and overall the three of Craig Jansik. Now we will bring in our boys here in the M class. And uh, Joe, why don't you go ahead and take our third place finisher in the M class, the 71 of uh, Christian Ortiz Doris. Hey there, Christian. You got a copy? Hey, guys. I hear you. Hey, uh, kind of uh, talk us through your race here tonight. Uh, looks like uh, you were top five there most of the race, and then we were stumbling and trying to figure out what happened there. Like the last lap, like Potts, something happened to him. And the next thing I know, you were in third, and, and the standings was just jumbled up there. Let's kind of talk us, through your, uh, talk us through your race here. Yeah, I mean, it, it was an exciting race uh, from the beginning. Um, uh, first lap was, was tough. I think I did a little bit of a mistake there in the bus stop but after that i was just trying to keep up my pace and um i'm also running a new setup so that was another thing uh, for me for myself i was challenging myself every lap and uh just trying to keep a, a steady pace and yeah um i was fighting with brandon and i ended up going wide in one of the turns and he passed me and <laughs> after that uh going into the pits and continuing with the race and yeah so is this uh, one of your better tracks or how do you how do you like getting around here at uh, Watkins Glen yeah so this is uh, one of the tracks that I'm more familiar with and uh, especially with the Ferrari um, I'm more confident with that car than uh, the other cars and yeah so it was able, I was able to learn the track uh, with the new setup uh, quick and uh, practice um, enough to be able to compete here today and yeah it was fun you might like your own personal setup or like the car setup uh the the whole rig so uh, before oh, okay. i was running thrustmaster and i went ahead and upgraded the pedals uh, wheelbase and so it's a whole new experience for myself oh so you're and, a lot of learning going on there yeah <laughs> a lot of different and, driving and trying to figure out yeah, that's it's that's that's quite a bit, and to be yeah. able to come away and get a third place finish though your first night out with it, huh? It's paying off. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I'm gonna have to be. I'm gonna have to be upgrading my stuff for this road race, and that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> There's so much more I need just to be able to. I mean, I need to get used to everything first and get and get my feet wet, and then I'm sure the 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 upgrades will be coming every day, every week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So we go to uh, Road America next week. Uh, will you be there, and uh, will you have speed? Yeah, yeah. So uh, I'll, we'll be there. Uh, we'll be practicing and trying to keep up uh, with the pace of everybody and uh, trying to be competitive out there, um, trying to do the whole season uh, as a whole and see where we end up at the end. Well, it looks like you were like sixth in points coming in here, and now you had a top three, so that's going to definitely help your cause in the point standings and running a full season. Um, you think you got something for the for the championship here? I will see. The, the field out there is competitive, and um, everybody uh, is pushing. And, yeah, as long as we don't make uh, mistakes and we can keep it on the track and uh, get points, uh, we'll, we'll try to get up there. All righty. Well, anybody want to give a shout out to you on that 71? Uh, yeah. Uh, shout outs to Brooke, my girlfriend, for supporting my sim racing. And also to my family in Denver and the CFG uh, team. And saludos al canal de Adane. Right on. That's well, all. Congrats on the third, and uh, we will see you next week. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Yes, sir. That is third place finisher here tonight, the 71 of uh, Christian Ortiz Torres. And let's be honest, we, we, we hear it a, a few times from uh, from the guys in here thanking their uh, their wives or their girlfriends or their significant others for, uh, you know, for, for supporting them in their in their efforts here. 
they're not they don't support us that they, they, they put up they put up with it but <laughs> let's 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 call it what it is they put up with our uh, mm-hmm. our addiction here but either way definitely uh it's, shout their, out there. it's their way of doing it <laughs> yeah exactly all right well second place here tonight in the am class is going to be the 25 of brandon potts and and brandon you had a quite an eventful race here. I mean, I, I feel like the entire race you were you were racing somebody. I mean, whether it was uh, you know back there you're racing uh, Jason for for quite some time, and and then even at the end you were uh, you were trying to catch up to uh, to the leader here. Randy was it was a little bit too too far out there, but you, you catch up the Christian and and make it make it pass him for a second. But pretty uh pretty racy race from here tonight. Definitely. It was uh it was one of those where I felt like like you said, like from literally before it even said green flag, I wanna say my my relative was hardly out of the the one point five to zero point seven range. Like I just felt like I was just in that gap. Um the the Lambo did get a little bit dangerous when I got inside of like the zero point threes. So I had to kinda especially with them Ferraris are just even if they come out of that that turn one bad, they just got that power. So I had to do some really good timing to get both uh, Jason and Christian, where I had to time it where I knew that I could get enough of my uh, my front in there where they just would have to leave me the room or whatever. Because man, the 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 mid mid range power of them Ferraris, whew, they're good. <laughs> Yeah, it was it was enough to uh to keep the uh the lead close there in the in the pro class for sure. But uh, I mean, at the end of the day, you, you maybe didn't have the uh, the qualifying effort that you uh that you wanted to have, but you, you worked your way through the field. Do you feel like if if you qualified better, you would have had a chance maybe at uh at Randy Ayers there at the end? It's, it seemed like the, the time was coming down little by little at the end. Yeah, I think that um, it's that plus the the very first lap going in the bus stop. Actually, I bumped Christian a little bit and it gave me damage immediately. So I had damage from the very first lap. So that was another reason why I was trying to tuck in a little bit without like I was trying to like kind of play leapfrog, like whoever I can get to get to them and then stick behind them so that I could get pulled ahead. So I didn't have to pit too early because um, I had a feeling if you if you pit it near by yourself it, with this track, with as much drafting as goes on. Um, you're just going to get left behind. But I think if I could have put in that second quality lap better, um, I made like a small mistake and uh, it, it cost me like four tenths. So I didn't get any better from my first. But uh, yeah, I think if I could have qualified and got like right up there with him, we could have had a nice battle at the end. I mean, either way, you, you come away with a uh, a second place finish here tonight and uh, definitely a, a nice little bounce back after uh, uh Actually, uh, yeah, last week, yeah, yeah, certainly a rough finish, finishing towards the back of the pack here tonight. But I mean, uh, last week, but tonight you finish top 10 overall. So uh, a really good uh, bounce back week after Interlagos last week. What was it about Watkins Glen? Was it just maybe more track knowledge or just having a, a, a race your car out there tonight? Again, it seems like the uh, the Lambo has been a, a lot of love lately, but it's it's still one that you, you got to know how to drive. Um. It's a mixture of, I, I do know the Lambo did the Daytona 24 in it. So I kind of know that one, you know, right behind the Porsche. But also last week I had food poisoning and I was racing like with, I, I'm talking about I was a full blown sweat by the time we qualified. Like the, my wheel was super heavy. I had like the feedback almost off. It was crazy. So that's why I, once I got near the end, I just kind of just stayed out of everybody's way last week. Um, I was trying, I, I just couldn't concentrate. So there was a couple battles that we were in there. And then I just, I backed out of a few battles cause I couldn't, couldn't hold it. Me and the other Brandon actually were talking about it. He was like, man, you're doing so good. And I'm like, <laughs> I, I, you know, I can only hold you off for so long, but that was about it. But, uh, this week, um, it, like I like Interlagos, but I really like Watkins. I don't know what it is about Watkins. Maybe it's the... I don't want to call it simplistic because of like it's simplistic. It's simple to learn, hard to master because like, for instance, like the bus stop, you take that wrong one time you're done. Yeah. So it's uh it's one of those where it's, it's just really fun. You can, it's wide enough where you can go side by side in certain areas and it's still safe. Uh, or you can poke your nose in and you're not afraid that the person, you know, might either hit you or whatever. Like there's plenty of room. So I think that's also what's nice about Watkins. And then the elevation change is just enough to where you, it messes with your brakes and your tires. So you have to really either save your tires, like for like a nice in run, um, which is kind of what I was trying to do. 
Um, so don't break as hard going in and do a little bit more coasting and trying to save them for the end. Um, or you have to really just kind of beat them up early, get the space, and then you can play defense. So, um, but yeah, just kind of combination of both and, and just, you know, like I said, Watkins, I, I kind of really like Watkins, um, a little bit more than Interlagos. So, um, it, it's like I said, it was probably just a mixture of both of those. Well, it certainly helps that uh, you, you weren't dealing with the sickness, too. I mean, I, I definitely had that uh, one time in a uh, 24-hour race, but luckily for me, it, it kind of came on uh, late in my uh, in my third stint, and I'm like, this guys, this is it. I'm done after this stint. So, <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> right. But uh, you get it done here tonight. Good uh, second-place finish. Next week, uh, Road America, do you, do you feel some confidence going into that one? Yes, I, I think I think I'm going to do pretty good at Road America. At least I hope so. Uh, Road America was the first track that I actually learned. So I'm hoping that, um, you know, that just with that knowledge and doing that many laps, you know, forever ago now, but uh, just it can kind of naturally come back to me and I have some pace. But Road America is another one that's just like Watkins where kind of easy to learn, but hard to master. So it's uh, you got to be careful. Plus, plus Road America has a couple of small spots where you can get some uh some slowdowns so you really got to be careful that you you on the edge line to where you don't get that slowdown because the slowdown in road america will cost you greatly well you go from uh from running sick last week to uh to a sick run here tonight so uh congrats to the, uh, the, the <laughs> thank second you. place thank you I like that <laughs> second place here tonight and uh you, you were the top pots as well as uh jason took the other uh, top spot last week but uh you get the second place here tonight just one spot shy, but we'll see if you can uh, better that at Road America last or next week. Who do you want to give a shout out to or thanks to before we let you go? Uh, just uh, want to give a shout out to ZFG Racing. Uh, give give one to Miss Phoenix as well. She's behind me. She's kind of my, my mini pit crew, whether I need water or something like that. <laughs> Help them, you know, with you know setting stuff up, and then um, you know, of course the family, you know, Jason and everybody, and uh, you know that, and then you guys for for you know throwing a good show. We appreciate that, and uh, we appreciate the show that you put on on the track out there. It, it was definitely uh, a lot on the broadcast, for sure. So you'll, you'll enjoy the uh, the broadcast coming back here because you were involved in uh, about I don't know, 35 different battles here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so congrats again on the second place. We'll let you go celebrate. All right, thank you. That is your second place finisher here tonight in AM class, the 25 of Brandon Potts. Last but not least, took a little bit to, to finally get to him, but uh, I, nobody could get to him here tonight. And uh, Joe, why don't you go ahead and take your AM class winner, 66 of Randy Ayers. Oh, Randy, you had a nice little cruise here this afternoon or this evening. Um, uh, kind of talk us through your race here tonight. Uh, yeah, we got a good start. Um, I'm not exactly sure what happened, but it seemed like... Uh, uh, there was some activity <laughs> in the first corner there. Uh, I came down and stayed in the inside and just hugged the inside, and there was a lot of stuff happening to the outside there. I'm not sure what. Watch the replay, but uh, I think there was a little bit of uh, net code involved. But uh, anyway, so uh, managed that, managed to stay out of that, and uh, just got behind um, uh Silvani and and got to be able to draft him for a little while and broke the draft of Jason behind me and um or branded by me and and uh, was able to uh pull away. Yeah, he didn't really have too much pressure all night at least from the from anybody from the amateur class. It seemed like you had pretty couple seconds pretty much the entire race. Um is this a is this a track that you're very comfortable with or was it just kind of a stuff circumstances there? Um, no, I'm comfortable with it. I've raced here a ton. Um, it's 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 one of those tracks that you just there's places where you just can't push, and you're gonna lose a ton of time if you you know start driving off the line and and breaking uh, late especially. So uh, I just tried to stay disciplined the whole race and and uh, worked out pretty good. Now I think we've from what I can recall we've only seen you in the Porsche. Is that all you drive or do you do you move around any? Drove the Lamborghini in the 12 hours of Sebring. Uh, my team decided that was the best car for us. And um, But, no, I also drive the Lamborghini. Um, sometimes in GT4, I'll, I'll drive the uh, AMG as well. So, yeah. Is, uh, so we go into uh, Road American next week. Is uh, Are you uh, excited for that track? Is that another good track for you? I love Road America. I love Road America. That kink is going to be a, <laughs> is always a challenge. 
it seems like more times than not, we, you are in the, in the top three after a race. I know last season it, you were like four for four. Then I think you missed a race, but like mm-hmm. it seems like every race you 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 find your way into into the top three some way. Um, as as a as a guy getting himself into this road racing world, what does it take for that kind of consistency from track to track? Uh, practice, 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 um, get, you know, familiar with one car, I would say, learn how to drive that well, you know, learn, you know, how your brake bias works, uh, when to make adjustments if you need to, um, since this is a a kind of a fixed setup league, um, that's really all you can change. So, uh, you know, practice on that, uh, manage your tires, try not to overdrive your tires, um, keep you know, what I always tell people that are starting out is imagine keeping the car flat. So, you know, the less inputs you can put into it and stay smooth, the faster you're going to go. Now, and in, in just real quickly, how how can you, quote unquote, save tires? Is that are you breaking earlier? Are you breaking, you know, less time? What, what's the, what's the key there? Yeah. Breaking uh, lighter and longer. And uh, so you're, you're reaching the apex at about the same speed, uh, but you're not putting a lot of pressure on the, t- uh, on the front tires, especially doing it. And um, same with exiting a corner, you know, easier on the uh, throttle and use as much of the track to run out as possible. And it's just, just like uh, maybe on, on exit, you, instead of straight flat footing it, you're kind of just bringing that throttle up as you know gradually as you can. It, it, in, in a lot of instances, yeah, there are times where you're just flat footing it too. So, because <laughs> <laughs> I'm like I, I, I'm getting into this road racing, and, and everybody talks about saving your tire, and I'm like, I've I've kind of figured out how to save tire on an oval, you know, and but like I'm just trying to I'll have to learn how to save tire you know in a, in a road race where you're trying to push every lap in every corner so I, i'm i'm something i'm gonna have to, to learn and i'm gonna be asking you guys as much questions as i can here to try to try to come away with something yeah a lot of times following a car very closely um is is harder on your tires as well you get a little less aero grip um so you have to rely more on mechanical grip and uh so that'll wear out a tire faster as well all right well i appreciate guys in that front, information just, guys in front just keep going away because just, <laughs> ask max for stopping how that works right <laughs> <laughs> well you get yourself another win here um anybody want to give a shout out to you on that 66 yeah my girlfriend tracy thanks for uh supporting me in all this and uh and uh, her dog, Dixie, the most beautiful Irish setter you'll ever meet. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, just uh, thanks thanks for the league for putting this on, and thanks to you guys for uh, broadcasting it all. It makes it a lot of fun. Yes, it does. It does indeed. Um, so uh, we'll let you get out of here and go celebrate a victory, and we'll see you next week at Road America. Thanks. Looking forward to it. See you guys. That is your winner here tonight in the AM class, the 66 of Randy Ayers, and certainly uh, a little bit better uh, tonight here for uh, for the 66 than uh, last week at Aaron Lagos getting uh, tangled up there with Brendan DeLima going through uh, turns one and two, but, uh, you know, bounce back very, very nicely here and uh, didn't have to, uh, to send the car after the, uh, the start-finish line, if, if I remember correctly. But uh, good run by a lot of these guys tonight. I mean, uh, a couple little mistakes you know, here and there. And, uh, certainly the, uh, the star of the race is, is going to be looked at here by the, uh, by the admins to, to see what went wrong there. But other than that, it was definitely the, uh, the former of the two things that I mentioned here tonight. And, and that's, you know, how are these guys going to handle the track? Is it going to be, you know, overconfidence or is it going to be, you know, just good, clean racing? And we've seen a lot of good, clean racing here tonight. Yes, we did. And I, I was expecting it to be really racy and uh mr potts gave us a lot of action for that tonight with being in a battle pretty much the entire race with somebody and uh, uh another great show from these guys and, and i'm ready for uh i'm glad to be back i'm sorry i missed last week but i was it was <laughs> i had i didn't have food poisoning like brandon did but it was <laughs> something something way worse but 
um, it's gone, and we're uh, I'm ready to get going with this season and learn some more about road racing. I think a few guys may uh, maybe taking a, a wander out there to the bus stop and taking a pickaxe to the uh, to the entry there, the bus stop, as it certainly uh, sent a couple guys for a uh, for a launch. And uh, really, once you're uh, if you got no no tires on the ground, it's it's kind of hard to steer the car. Um, so <laughs> that's why you've seen the guys just uh, get sent into the uh, the wall there in the bus stop. Uh, you've seen it with uh, Bassano and uh, and really I think two other two or three other guys as well. So. Yeah, these too, things uh, have a wing back. on them, but that wing won't help you turn. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it's not a wing to take air. It's it's definitely uh, it's not what you want to do. But great race here tonight by the boys here at CSRL. Thank you again to 40 Racewear for helping out with the sponsorship this season, and uh, and thank you to, to Jim Dunton for uh, for letting us do this. It's it's fun. I know uh, I'm having a blast. Clearly, Joe's having a blast. Hopefully, everybody out there, you guys and gals, are having a blast as well. If you haven't done so yet, hit that like and subscribe and and help us get up there to uh, to 1000 subscribers it's just kind of that the mark that we're uh you know our goal that we're looking to try and hit but it's been fun here tonight hope you enjoyed it hope we'll see you next week at road america but for myself and joe here at the Glen, we'll see you at the track